Join the fandom menace and execute your own Order 66 with our incredible line of t-shirts, Soy Low, A Soy Wars Story, Tico, A Soy Wars Story, and our brand new smoking hot Soy Wars Plan 9. Make a statement today. This is the only trilogy you'll ever need. The link is below in the description. Hello. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. It's great to be with you. You're listening to me. And I'm Ethan Van Skyver, 25-year veteran of the comic book industry, creator of Cyberfrog, uh, and illustrator of Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Uh, I'm, this, this video is going to sound like I'm gloating. Uh, maybe I'm gloating a little. Maybe I'm a little gloaty. Maybe I'm a little gloatish uh, right now. Um, but actually, uh, in fact, I'm also deeply concerned. Uh, I'm deeply concerned. I don't want to have to go ha 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 all the time. I want to actually um, say, hey, uh, comic book industry, uh, fix yourselves, fix yourselves. Now, I mean, look, the top, you know, 5% of comic book professionals um, are going to be just fine. They're going to be just fine through this. Talent will always find a home. Great talent will always find a home. And those, you know who I'm talking about, the very top of the comic book industry, you know, they'll be fine no matter what happens. They're going to find a new place to work. Uh, and, you know, if the comic book industry survives in some semblance, uh, albeit smaller, reduced, shrunk, uh, those people will still be uh, employed. Um, but most of the industry is uh, collapsing around us. Comic book stores are going out of business at a much faster rate than uh, anyone anticipated. Um, and uh, a lot of people are just flummoxed by this. The industry, the comic book industry, was infected uh, by SJWs around the year 2013, 2014, and they started to allow each other uh, to come into uh, the comic book industry. They started hiring more SJWs uh, to come in and write these superhero stories. Uh, they started making drastic changes to superhero books, and predictably, the audience fled. They didn't understand this. They didn't understand what they were doing to comics. They didn't get it. Uh, you know, but the audience, the audience has so many options. Comic books are an addiction. Comic books are an addiction and, a, and an addiction can be kicked. You can overcome an addiction. Um, you can quit smoking, you know. Uh, if smoking starts to annoy you, uh, you can quit smoking. You can decide, I don't want to smoke anymore. You can decide, I don't want to drink. Uh, I don't want to do this or that. I don't want to eat pie. Why would I say eat pies? Why would I bring up pie right now? I don't know. Uh, you can kick those addictions if you want to, and that's what the comic book uh, community, the comic book fandom, uh, is starting to do, unfortunately. Now, we've got to find a way to bring them back. We've got to find a way to bring them back. We don't, you know, the, the poison uh, that exists right now in the big two, um, that's something that's going to have to either kill its host or work its way out of the system. Either comics, mainstream comics, has to undergo severe chemotherapy, which means trebucheting, all of these social justice warriors out on their asses. They're not that talented. They don't belong in comics. They're not doing a good job. Uh, the, the virtue signal that comes with hiring these people, uh, you know, and the, and the idea that, you know, they can get in there and, uh, you know, utilize comics, utilize this industry as a way to uh, completely and totally virtue signal that, you know, this and that, all of their little political beliefs, uh, and end up not selling comics, end up uh, upsetting people, uh, end up irritating the fandom. Uh, it isn't worth it. It isn't worth it long term, is it? It's not worth it. It was fun for a little while. Uh, it's no fun anymore now that you're seeing that uh, the comic book industry is collapsing. Uh, these people will have to be ejected. And if nobody has the uh, ability, the strength, uh, the resolve to do that, uh, because maybe uh, the infection has reached the very highest levels, the comic book industry will implode on itself. Now, in the meantime, uh, I uh, have uh, gone off on my own and uh, using using my YouTube uh, platform, using the fans that I have garnered, that I have collected as uh, you know an artist at DC Comics, um, and using my own personal charm and salesmanship, I've gone out on my own, and I've put out a comic book called Cyberfrog on Indiegogo, and it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying to do this. 
uh, it was terrifying. Uh, my wife and I were scared. We were very afraid about, about taking this chance, but we did take this chance. You know why? We believed in ourselves and we believed in you. We believed in our fans. We believed in our subscribers. We believed uh, that if we put out a great product, if we were going to offer you guys a great product um, and uh, sell it to you uh, as hard as we could, uh, you guys would uh, take a chance with us. You guys would uh, join us uh, in this and uh, want to be a part of it, support it. And sure enough, you have. Uh, the rest of the comic book industry, particularly uh, SJWs, have watched this in awe and terror and confusion. They do not understand why Cyberfrog number one, Cyberfrog Blood Honey number one, uh, collected 538 thousand dollars in pre-orders now just to make this clear to you just so that you understand uh the comic book industry as it is now if you were to put out an independent comic um through image or through any one of these other publishers uh as an artist as a writer uh you know you might be if you are lucky able to collect a profit of two three thousand dollars per issue okay if you're lucky uh working at the big two right now uh, if you are in, uh, if you are on top of the mountain, okay, uh, like I was at DC Comics, uh, you might collect as an artist fifteen to twenty thousand uh, dollars for an issue. That's what you might earn per issue. Uh, so that is the high end. Uh, here I am over here independently working on my own, bringing in half more than well over half a million dollars and pre-sales, pre-order sales. This is before I even solicit it through the comic book stores. You understand? This is before it's digital. Uh, it's offered digitally to people. Uh, this is just in anticipation, uh, red carpet premiere. Uh, this is the um, ultimate version, the movie theater version. I was explaining this to Andrea. I was saying, here's how I see comics. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to, I'm going to share with you some of my theories about how we can fix the comic book industry, how we, how we change the way that we present comics to people. I'm going to do that in a minute. But first, uh, somebody alerted me to this series of tweets from an SJW who was reaching out to Eric J. Larson. Eric Larson, creator of um, Savage Dragon over at Image Comics. He's one of the Image Comics partners, one of the Image Comics founders. Uh, Eric Larson left Marvel Comics in 1991 or two uh, to go form a company called Image Comics with six other artists who uh, felt that they weren't getting uh, their share of the, pi the pie. And I keep bringing up pie. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, uh, so he went over there. It was pr amazingly successful. Uh, most of those partners have moved on to other things. Eric has decided to stay right where he is, true to his roots and draw the same comic book that he started back in 1991 called The Savage Dragon. And The Savage Dragon is now selling 4,000 copies, 4,000 copies a month, whenever, however frequently it comes out. Uh, and uh, everyone else has kind of moved on to other things. But Eric has sat there. He's still an image comic. So uh, here's an SJW uh, not reaching out to me. Uh, reaching out to Eric, asking Eric to please explain what uh, the success. How did this happen, Eric? Can you help me understand the success of the Cyberfrog Indiegogo campaign? Was it just a fluke, or were, was there just that many pent up conservative comic fans just waiting to throw money at something? Um, yeah, uh, neither one of these uh, is correct. Neither neither one of these is correct. Neither one of these theories is correct. They're both. Uh, ideas that this fellow is uh, hoping uh, he needs to this SJW fellow uh, needs his universe to make sense his worldview needs to make sense and the fact that Cyberfrog uh, did so well uh, doesn't make sense to him it doesn't make sense to him so he needs to explain it in words look either it was just wow it's just a weird accident it couldn't be repeatable oh but wait until you see Rainbow Brute wait until you see Rainbow Brute we'll see if it was a fluke or not uh, or was there just that many pent up? So in other words, this was just uh, entirely, uh, a, a, you know, a bunch of Republicans and conservatives uh, and right wingers who just threw money, just threw money at me for no particular reason, uh, just for fun, you know, just because that's how they felt. Uh, Eric Larson, uh, hold on a sec. Eric Larson lives in his own world. Uh, he's not paying attention. He says, I have no special insight. It's not even a thing 
I'm aware of. This tweet is literally the first I've heard of it. Okay, so this guy's about to educate Eric Larson uh, about the terror, the terror of cyber frog. Let's find out uh, what comes next. Uh, look at this. Uh, he made half a million dollars on it. More than that, 538000 more than More than half a million. Uh, it just seemed like a surprisingly large amount of money for Cyberfrog to make out of the blue like that. So it's just out of the blue. Uh, this fellow isn't following me. He's not following my career at all. He's not following the work that I've done. Uh, he is just, uh, you know, he was expecting me to leave DC Comics after being harassed uh, by his compadres, uh, the SJWs, who have threatened me, who have uh, spread rumors about me, who have written nasty, evil articles calling me a Nazi, uh, and uh, a harasser of women, sexist, bigot, homophobe, all of these things uh, that they traditionally call people they're trying to get rid of. Uh, he thought I would just disappear, and he didn't follow what I've been up to. Uh, so from out of the blue, uh, look at this, half a million dollars. What, what the hell? How does that make any sense? Well, you know, uh, let's see. Um, you know, uh, yeah, he said, true. I, I just thought the current political climate and outspoken views his outspoken views might have been a big factor. I haven't even heard about Cyberfuck since the 1990s. Okay, uh, sir, um, could have been anything. It didn't need to be Cyberfrog. I'm, I'm, I'm very good. I'm, v I don't want to take credit away from myself here. I'm very, very good at what I do. It could have been almost anything that I offered. Uh, any one of my ideas would have done very, very well. It would have done very well. Uh, so I just answered him and said, you know, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to talk about it and explain why Cyberfrog raised $538,000 uh, to these guys, but I don't think there's anything in it for me. Uh, there's no reason to to uh, educate these people um, about uh, how to make a comic book sell. I mean, they're not listening. They're not actually listening to comic skaters. They're not listening to uh, diversity in comics. They think he is a bigot and he's stupid and he's off base. Uh, they're not listening to me. Uh, you know, they're not listening. They're not listening. So there's no real reason to try to educate them. I uh, said, so probably I'll just hush and do it again in October with Rainbow Brew. That, that is the thing. Uh, that, you know, that is the thing to do at this point. I'll say, well, if you think it's a fluke, I will repeat my success using the same marketing strategy uh, that you saw me do or you didn't see me do. You weren't paying attention uh, before. And I'll just, uh, you know, I will flummox you once again. Um, you know, that's... Uh, that just seems like the right thing to do. That makes sense. That makes sense. And, uh, you know, so I'm like, I'm not going to do it. And this guy's like, go ahead, dazzle me with your genius. Do you see this attitude? I mean, this is the thing. It's like, you are, you're, <laughs> you're acknowledging that I've done something to blow you away and you don't understand it. And then you're, you're pretending. I mean, this is just, I'm like, bro, I already did. What do you think that series of tweets was? What was that series of tweets about you saying, how did you, how did he do it? Was it just a fluke, blah, blah, blah. It's about time uh, to just kind of ask some serious questions, unless uh, this isn't an effort to understand uh, how to market and sell comic books in current year. Uh, this is just more about comforting yourself uh, with, you know, and, and, and making it make sense within your narrow worldview. You know, in your in your worldview, uh, you uh, cannot understand how this is happening. You'd think that, you know, if you tell people, hey, social justice warriorism, SJW comics do not sell. They don't sell. And the reason why they don't sell is because people do not want to pay $4. They don't want to pay $4 to read your nonsense. They don't want to read it. You know, they don't want to, they don't want to pay for it. And they, they hear it every day. Everywhere they go, they hear uh about your far left wing politics. You're asking them to pay for it? So the worst thing you can possibly do is come out on Twitter and announce that you are a social justice warrior. Uh, demonstrate uh, that you despise your fans. Demonstrate that you hold views uh, that hold them in contempt. That's the worst thing you can possibly do for your comics. It's the worst thing you can possibly do. What you need to do is identify who your audience is and sell to them and sell to them and be honest about it. Don't try to, you know, don't try to, um, don't try to create your own audience necessarily. Don't, 
not at the expense of the audience that you already have. God damn, this should be so obvious. It pains me to have to explain this. This is what Comicsgate is. This is the, the very foundation of Comicsgate. You have to accept who the people are that are buying the comic books. They're guys. They're men between the ages of 28 and 65. Men. And there's some girls that do it too. There's some women who do it too, but they are uh, rare. Uh, they're a small percentage of the comic buying, habitual comic buying public. Uh, and, uh, by the way, they kind of like the comics that we were already making. So it's like you didn't have to change the comics to make them for women because the women kind of liked the comics already the, the way that they were. That's, that's how they got into the comics. Uh, changing the comics and trying to adapt them from your weirdo SJW, presume, probably male perspective, um, into something that you feel or believe that women will prefer is going to get you into real trouble and it's going to hurt your comic book industry. It's going to hurt the sales of your, of your books. Uh, and it is going to um, it's going to chase away all of your audience. It's going to chase away your male audience, the ones that actually go into the comic book store seeking uh, masculine power fantasies. Uh, though that is your audience in comics. I'm sorry. I know you might not like it. I know you might find that problematic and toxic. Uh, but comics are mostly um, and best marketed to men who want to enjoy male uh, power fantasies. <clears throat> so. And that having been said, uh, there's a way to market to these people. Um, there's a way to market to your audience. Uh, there is a way to let them know. Uh, there is a way to uh, humbly solicit uh, their uh, custom, as it were. Uh, and these are things also that the comic book industry is struggling with. And comic book retailers uh, are on the receiving end of that pain. Uh, I would love to be able to um, send Cyberfrog to comic book retailers too. I'd love to do that. That is a plan. That is absolutely a plan. But I have to make it absolutely clear and known um, to comic book retailers and the industry in general uh, that I will not kind of tolerate uh, what happened to diversity in comics' his book, Jawbreakers, happening to Cyberfrog. In other words, the book already made $538,000. Uh, selling to, I think we sold 10,000 copies, 10,000 copies of a $25 book. I don't need to sell anymore. I don't need to share. I don't need to, uh, but I want to. I want this comic book uh, to be in comic shops. I want to make an even bigger profit if possible. Um, I want comic book retailers to promote Cyberfrog and uh, make money off of it as well. Uh, I will point out to the industry uh, in general uh, and to people who are concerned more about money than virtue signaling their far left wing wacko punch and Nazi politics uh, that are toxic and that scare away uh, the comic book fandom community. Uh, I will point out to them um, that I'm going to try to do this and our mutual foe uh, might be these SJWs who are going to um, try to threaten uh, and coerce others uh, into making your life difficult in trying to stock my comic. And if that's what happens, if anyone is threatened or anything like that, like they did to Jawbreakers, I just won't put it in the shops. And I'll just say, well, it's, you know, yeah, like the industry is collapsing. I found a way to sell comic books, um, you know, easily in mass quantities at a huge profit uh, and with zero pipeline straight from me into the hands of the customers. People don't even have to get off the sofa, get in their car, find a comic shop on their GPS and drive to it uh, and interact with people. Uh, they don't have to do that. Risk being called a Nazi, risk being humiliated, thrown out of the comic shop as happened to um, this kid, Dylan. Um, they don't have to risk any of that. I'll send it straight to them. Uh, that's, that's the alternative. I mean, that is the alternative that, you know, that I have that puts me at a very distinct advantage, that puts Comicsgate at, at a distinct advantage. We can do this. I mean, we can do this easily. We could do our own comic books. I, I'm, you know, you watch it happen every single night where I do a live stream. Uh, I bring in independent creators. Uh, I let them market their own comics and, and solicit their comics to you guys, the audience. And um, they make, uh, they, they find themselves funded pretty quickly because of that. So uh, there's a lot, lot more to it than that, Dick, Dick, Dick. Um, a lot more to it, uh, but I think you're sufficiently dazzled at this point. 
uh, we, we've done this before. We can do it again. I will do it again. I'm going to do it again um, this autumn. Uh, I am going to offer another comic book, another big, exciting comic book, a good product. It has to be a good product. You can't just give them, you know, nonsense. They will, they will support the comic based on how badly they want it. Let me tell you something. They love Cyberfrog and Salamandroid. They actually like Salamandroid more than Cyberfrog. Probably should have called the book Salamandroid, but um, it's called Cyberfrog. Uh, as long as it's a product that they want, they are going to come out in droves to get it. How do you make them want it? You listen to what they're saying, and you give them what it is that they want. Uh, and it is utterly dazzling, and it is utterly ingenious. Thanks. Hey, want to follow me on Twitter? Okay, cool. I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. Talk to you there. If you enjoyed this video and want to become part of this community, subscribe to this channel by clicking the Laughing Man Face logo right on your screen. Ring the bell for notifications as well. You'll never miss a live chat. And stay tuned, another video by Comic Artist Pro Secrets is coming right up.